Amen. Well, I wanted to continue for the next uh, little while uh, on the same thing that I started with yesterday. And so let's, let's, let's remind uh, us um, of what we started on our sermon yesterday. And so I, I wanted to remind you a little bit, so we'll take a little bit more time today uh, to go into the background in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews was written uh, for people who were um, struggling in their faith. And, and, and they were struggling in their faith because they were having some challenges committing themselves to this risen Messiah, to this risen King. And this newfound faith, so to speak, um, has brought about not a lot of good things uh, in their lives, meaning earthly uh, things. They, it was a challenge. Uh, they were receiving persecution, as we talked about. They were receiving uh, the confiscation of their properties. People who were associated with them uh, were being persecuted. And, uh, and so they were wondering, should they go back to their former faith? Should they go back to their former life? And um, that happens quite a bit um, uh, when difficulties come and, 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 and the challenge to remain faithful to God. And, um, you know, when you think about it, sometimes when you're in that state, you wonder why God did not take me as soon as I got baptized and whisked me up up to heaven. I mean, why is that not the case? And yet we see in the scriptures that Paul writes and he says, you know, for me uh, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And, and But he says, man, it, it's better for me to, uh, I wish I, I uh, could go up and see God right now, but the whole idea is that God's got work for us to do here and work to help other people one of it is to help other people in their faith and 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 so and so the the idea is that paul is writing and he's helping them to understand and and, and we'll continue along that theme in romans chapter uh sorry hebrews chapter 10 and so we'll focus there a little bit on verse 34 it says you suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions so let's 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 stop there for a second um one of the things that i understand and what what a writer of the book of hebrews is helping them to understand is to look forward is to look ahead is to look heavenly and, and 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 so this idea because the possessions and so he's using what is being confiscated what is being taken from them on this earth and he says listen that's a trade that is really worth it the trade that you're giving in today the possessions that's been taken in, taken from you, you're, it, it's, it, it's a, if you, if you look at it, it's sort of like a, a bartering system and the bartering system that you have, you have done, you have actually traded in that which is temporary, that which is going to fade, that is which is going to spoil, that is which is going to be destroyed. And you're trading it in for a possession that is better and that would last forever. So, I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, a show. There was a show where people who are master barterers, okay? And so what they do, they literally start with almost nothing that they found either in a garage sale. And, um, and so people have done this, and so they're masters 
uh, who have done this. And they go and they trade what they have found, either someone throwing away or something, or they find for minuscule cost. And they go and trade it for something better that somebody has. And so they have these, sometimes people do a number of bartering so that they, and they started with something that costs a dollar or two, if anything at all, and they end up getting a brand new car that ultimately they trade up and they find somebody who wanted that and they get something a little better. And so they get a lawnmower, then they get a riding lawnmower, then they get a riding lawnmower with a snowblower. And, and, and so they find, they, they go and they barter because uh, 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 they're very, very good at it. God's saying, when you live by faith, that's what happens. And so we are not controlled by what happens to our life because of our faith here on this earth. There are times that we give up some things because there's no question about it. That the scripture talks about the fact that when we choose to be a follower of Christ, you actually take the narrow way. You take the narrow path. There is no question. If you are living an authentic life of Christianity, if you live an authentic faith, there are things that you don't do that you used to do. There are things that you are not allowed to do, so to speak, that it is not proper for you to do because you have chosen a path that is now a narrower path. That's not, that's, that's the way it is. And some of those things sometimes are like who we date, who we marry. That that's, that's a path that the Bible speaks specifically about. Even what kind of a job you'll have. Even what kind of a employer you might be or even what kind of an employee that you might be what kind of a parent you are going to be where perhaps you are going to live how you are going to live and so the path that you have taken is a narrower path and so paul's uh, the, the writer of the book of hebrews is writing and he's helping these guys to understand that you get to that point in your life where now these things that are being bar bartered, not willingly, unwillingly, so to speak, that now your disposition towards it, it's not one of apprehension or even it's taking away from you. You actually see it as a notch on your belt. You see it as an accomplishment. You see it actually as a reward because it almost authenticates your faith. The idea <clears throat> that what is being taken because of my faith authenticates my faith, it doesn't take away from my faith. And yet there are times and what I shall call the health and wealth gospel is that sometimes people tell you, what are you, and it projects in our mind, what is going on that is so wrong in my faith that these things are happening to me, that my boss is not treating me the way I, I mean, that I, am, I ought to be treated. And can you imagine that we live a life on this earth that we are so removed from its possessions. We're so removed from its treasure that our treasure is actually not here found on earth. Our treasure is now Christ. That Christ is our treasure. Not that try Christ gives us treasures, but he is now our treasure. 
Wow. And, and then we'll look at it again. And then he says, oops, it went out on me. And then he says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And what he has promised is to put you in the future. And so when we live for this new king, Jesus, and we enter into this new kingdom, the kingdom of God, the way I measure things, the metrics that I use are so different. The metrics I use are metrics of perseverance. Not personal property. And so, and I love what it says at the end. And so this week, what we're going to do, we're going to use some examples. We're going to check out some examples of people who, because of what they looked forward to, it affected the way they lived their lives here on earth. Because of the forward-looking Christians, right? He says, but my righteous one in verse 38 will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. The call is for us to persevere. The call is for us to look forward. The call is for us to live by faith. And look what it says, and it sums it all up in verse 6. In chapter 11, here's the all-inclusive statement. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And so the idea here that the writer is helping these disciples to understand, he, he, he empowers them, he enlivens them, he puts, he puts courage into them to have faith. Faith that he just defined, that we spent some time yesterday understanding. Not faith that you have to go and prove to someone else. But faith by your action proves what you believe. Faith by, by the fact that someone's not going to convince you by some book or some, some, some reasoning, so to speak, which are oftentimes very flawed, but that we actually go about understanding that. And that's the life I want to live here on earth. That's the life I'm inspired to. That I, as I think about my day, that my metrics on my life is not measured, get this, by whether well or not my car starts. Or even what kind of a car I drive. Or even how I look. So the metrics of my life is measured by my ability to persevere in my faith. That my attitude, what is my attitude when things on this earth don't go the way that it needs to go because of my faith, because of my convictions. And get this, sometimes guys, this challenge that we receive is even from brothers and sisters who may not understand exactly what's going on in our lives, who may not understand why sometimes we do and sometimes we, we don't receive the, 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 the encouragement that we think, man, I should actually be lauded for this. And instead, some, someone is actually uh, uh, challenging us and even perhaps even discouraging us. And so the idea is, 
I'm encouraged and inspired. And I'm, we, we're going to look at these people who, because they looked forward, that's what it says of Abraham. Abraham went after he was asked to go somewhere. The Bible tells us he didn't even know where he was going. But he went because he went to a city who ultimately what he was thinking about to a city whose architect and builder is God. Why did I come to Ottawa? Not because of the beautiful parliament buildings and snow, and they are pretty. Why do, I, why do we make decisions that we do? Because I'm looking forward to a city whose architect and builder is God. That's, that's why we make decisions here on earth. And oftentimes, when I'm not doing as well as I need to be doing, I measure my success on what I receive here on earth. And I ask myself, man, is God blessing this effort? Man, is, is, is this, oh, is this a good move? But if we make decisions by faith and we look forward to a city whose architect and builder is God, then we have uh, the fuel to persevere in our faith. And it's not measured by things that we do. And so when I jump on the scale and I didn't lose as much weight as I intended, and I'm saying, God is disciplining and you really is you really think that's what it is. Or when we make decisions that man, I am not going to compromise my faith by dating someone who does not have faith. We seem difficulty to find one, and this is a difficult one. It's challenging. But we ought to get to our faith that we make decisions and we do things. And so that's what I'm inspired to do this morning, to realize, man, that, that first of all, I'm not one of those who shrink back and are destroyed. No, no, no. I'm going to be one of those who actually have faith and move forward. And the fact that I know that without faith is impossible to please God. There's no other way. It has to have a component to my relationship with God must have faith. Now, how many people are shared by faith? With? That may be as a result of my faith. But if I do that instead of my faith, then I can't please God. Doesn't matter how much money you give to the church. Now, if I did that because of my faith, but instead of my faith, those are two big things that are different. If we do things that we, we worship God instead of my faith, instead of because of my faith, then I've got some issues. And so this idea that I'm going to make decisions on this earth today. Think about that today. When you think about it, if something doesn't go your way, if it's a decision by faith, <clears throat> you don't measure, measure the metrics by what you do. Because I know sometimes for me, I wonder, and I, like I shared yesterday, man, if I chose a different path, would I end up from a physical, the amount of physical things that I've acquired here on this earth, would I be where I'm at? What would my net worth be? That's when you, I'm not thinking right. And then I start bringing in this ridiculous kind of gospel, that wonder, this health and wealth gospel is God blessing me. The right, I mean, there's, it, that that is such a that that gospel is such a wicked gospel because first of all it's no gospel at all and it is so anti-scripture. 
And so this morning, I want to I wanna challenge you to have eyes that have faith and that you have uh, your disposition is based on what faith says. That our actions today, when I treat my brother and my sister and my mother or my coworker or my boss or my employee, is based on the fact that I am looking forward to a city whose architect and builder is not Frank Lloyd Wright, is God, is God, who's that I look forward, not to someone who designs, not Ford who designs my car, or Ferrari, or whether or not it's Porsche, or whether or not it's, that, that, that's, that's not how I measure my success. It's based on my perseverance. And so, man, that, that, that kind of stuff, at least what it does for me, and that's what I wanted to encourage you with this morning, is to think about what awaits us, the lasting possessions, the better possessions that await us. And because of that, we have a position when someone looks at it, man, what, why does that fire you up? Why? Well, how come that is so exciting? Because we look forward to a city whose architect and builder is God. Amen? So that's the thought for the day as we go about our day this morning. Uh, well, uh, uh, Jamila, as you were ending your day, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so as you go to bed, and uh, in Jamila's case, as she had a night shift, wow, amen. God bless you. But uh, let's go about our day. And so we're going to look at some examples of who people made decisions in the scriptures. And one of those we looked at this, this morning uh, was, was Abraham. Abraham, the Bible says, that's why he made the decisions that he did. And, and the, the Hall of Fame of Faith highlights people who made decisions on earth based on what they were looking forward to. And, and so he, he then encourages them to remain strong in the faith. And that's what I want to encourage you with today. Remain strong in the faith through perseverance and through faith. Amen? Not based on what is seen, but based on what is not seen. That's who we are. That's the kind of people that we are. Let's have a prayer as we, as we close our morning. Father, wow, we're just so grateful that you give in us this yearning, that there is an, uh, a, a, an expectation that awaits us that's exciting, that is, that is uh, really uh, something that gives us a sense of encouragement, a sense of longing. Thank you for doing that, that, that even the, the awaiting of heaven brings about a, a, an excitement in our lives. And Father, thank you for trading in our possessions here on earth. And when people persecute us or when people challenge us or try to take away from us, little do they realize what they're doing is that they're exchanging these possessions for one that lasts and one that is better. Give us, Father, in our hearts, this strength to persevere. Open our eyes so that we can see your fingerprints on this earth. And Father, understand that we put our trust in you and that we await a city whose architect and builder is indeed you. Help us to have a great day as we honor you with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.